welcome to another Cold Fusion video. In this video, we'll take a look at the Hyperloop, the brand new method of transport brought forth by the entrepreneur and billionaire Elon Musk. So let's get straight into it. First of all, what is it? Well, in broad terms, it's a fifth mode of transport. So far throughout history, we've been using trains, cars, planes, boats, and technically rockets, but I haven't been in one, and you probably haven't either, so that doesn't really count. The Hyperloop is going to be the fifth form of transport. So going into more specific details, the Hyperloop is a high-speed transport system in which passengers sit in a pressurized capsule that rides on a cushion of air. The capsule operates in a sealed, near-vacuum environment. The propulsion system is still to be chosen from a number of options, two of which are magnetic levitation or air pressure, similar to that of an air hockey table. The blueprints are pretty complicated. Well, blueprints are always kind of complicated, and I mean, yes, there's math, <laughs> but it's really not that hard. It still sounds pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's just a low pressure tube with a pod in it that uh, runs on, on air bearings, on air skis, with uh, an air compressor on the front that's taking the, the high pressure air buildup on the nose and pumping it through the air skis. It's really, I swear it's not that hard. <laughs> the system is proposed to travel at an average speed of 900 kilometers an hour and at a top speed of 1,220 kilometers an hour. Elon really doesn't have that much time to do this one. He's too busy building rockets, electric cars, and batteries to power homes. So he's given away this idea and outsourced it in the form of a competition. Several companies have formed to take on the project, and even some all-star interdisciplinary student-led teams are working together to advance the Hyperloop technology. But more on this later. So why does Elon Musk want to do all of this? What's the point? What we really intended to do with the Hyperloop was really to, to spur interest in new forms of transportation. Um, and I think, I, I'm starting to think this is really gonna, gonna happen. So, yeah. I mean, it's clear that the public and the, the world wants something new. Um, and I think uh, you guys are gonna bring it to them. So, congratulations. Yeah. Okay, so how did the idea come about? Well, back in 2012, Elon was at a Pando Daily event in Santa Monica, California. There, he announced to the world that he was thinking of a fifth mode of transport. This is that moment. And, and, and I'm thinking like, maybe I should patent it and then offer to open source the patent to anyone that can make a credible case that they could actually do it. Um, so I'm sort of debating it, but it would be for, for a fifth mode of transport. I, I have a name for it, name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. Elon states in another interview that this initial concept came to him when he was stuck in LA traffic, which caused him to be one hour late for a meeting. So that's all well and good, but let's weigh out some advantages and possible problems with the system. First, the advantages. Theoretically, the pods can't crash. It's also much cheaper to build. It's about one-tenth the cost of the proposed California high-speed railway system. This means that tickets could cost as little as $25. It's also a lot faster. You can basically get from downtown LA to downtown San Francisco in 30 minutes, and it would take about the same time to get from Amsterdam to Paris. Just as a side note, for distances longer than that, it's actually more economically viable to use a supersonic jet. It's also extremely energy efficient due to solar power utilization. In fact, the Hyperloop could generate more power than it consumes as a closed system. Well, because you generate more power uh, than, you, than you consume in the system, um, and there's a way to store the power so that it would run 24-7 mm -hmm. um, without using batteries. So technically, the whole thing actually acts as a power generator. Okay, so let's move on to some possible problems. Here are some thoughts from the critics of the Hyperloop. They say that the experience could be frightening because passengers would be in a narrow, sealed, windowless capsule inside a sealed tunnel. Also, the fast acceleration and noisy vibration could cause motion sickness. There are also logistical questions regarding how to best deal with equipment malfunctions, accidents and emergency evacuations. Finally, the costs may be higher than anticipated. 
Elon has stated that he realizes these challenges, but has strong faith in the skills and innovation of those working on the problem. In addition to this, designs could also change in the future for the better. Okay, so just for fun, let's take a wider perspective on the concept of the Hyperloop. You may be surprised to realize that such an idea is over 200 years old. In 1812, British mechanical engineer and inventor George Methurst wrote a book detailing his idea of transporting passengers and goods through airtight tubes using air propulsion. The first real working application of a Hyperloop style transport system was the Crystal Palace Pneumatic Railway. This operated through tunnels in London in 1864 and used large fans that were powered by a steam engine. The line actually operated successfully for a year before it was closed down. Alright, so back to the present day, let's look at some current progress of the Hyperloop. So right now, tracks are being built in Nevada, allowing engineers to test systems and refine their designs. Three companies have already begun funding rounds to operate the Hyperloop. They are Hyperloop Transportation Technologies Inc., SpaceX, and Hyperloop Technologies. Hyperloop Technologies and Hyperloop Transportation Technologies Inc. have been talking to 10 governments, including China, to build Hyperloops in their major cities. There have also been other simulations and tests done by independent companies, just to see how the concept would be. For example, MATLAB ran a test with Simulink to see how the Hyperloop would perform on the proposed California route. In the simulation, we have speed at the top, passenger comfort measured in G-force, and elevation at the bottom. Passenger comfort is what we need to keep an eye on here. Just for clarification, G-force is basically the measure of pull on a body due to a change in direction when in motion. For reference, a car turning a wide corner with a radius of 23 meters at about 50 kilometers an hour pulls about 0.8 Gs. As you can see, the passenger comfort in the simulation of the Hyperloop stays mostly within the 0.5 region due to some natural dampening by the air cushion. So it actually seems like this idea could be pretty comfortable, maybe no less comfortable than a car in fact, mathematically and theoretically speaking anyway of course. Alright, so we're almost at the end of the video, but just one last bit, let's take a look at the Hyperloop pod competition. A number of student and non-student teams are participating in a Hyperloop pod competition right now as we speak. Back in June 2015, SpaceX announced that they would sponsor a Hyperloop pod design competition. Just one month later, more than 700 teams had submitted applications. In January of 2016, more than 120 student engineering teams were selected to submit final design packages. In mid-2016, at least 22 of them will build hardware to compete on a test track in California. I really think this is an amazing opportunity for young engineers, inventors, and designers to really get their minds working on something that could change history. It's encouraging to see. The Hyperloop seems to be a concept that could revolutionize medium distance travel. But furthermore, the actual concept of outsourcing and openly floating ideas, designs, and talents is an amazing new way to innovate and do business within the infrastructure sector. The violent shift away from the status quo is also really exciting. We just have to watch this space closely in the future. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. This has been Dagogo. You've been watching Cold Fusion. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to this channel if you're new. Definitely do that. There's a lot of interesting stuff on this channel, so take a look around and find a video that you like. And I guess I'll see you again soon for the next video. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.